Based just outside Alicante in Spain, Mondraker Bikes is not afraid of doing bold things. Things like revolutionizing mountain bike geometry, things like providing electric kids balance bikes, or even more recently in providing their own telemetry system for improving the suspension on their bikes. But even the headquarters looks a bit more like something you expect to find in a Bond movie. Now I'm here to find out how they work, what makes them tick, and how they develop bikes like the Rays. Mondraker is a brand with roots in racing. It was founded in 2001, and this bike here was their first bike, a petrol downhill bike. Now, as the company found its feet, the innovation was definitely fueled by racing, but over time, the next 21 years, in fact, the company has found other ways to sort of develop the bikes. That said, a couple of obvious ones are still inspired by racing. The Enduro Focus Super Foxy, the Downhill Focus Summon, but there's a new bike, the Rays, which is a trail bike. And that's the bike that Mondrake have invited me here to find out a bit more about. Okay, so a bit about the bike. This is the Mondraker Raze. It's running on 29 inch wheels, front and rear. It's running just 130 millimeters of travel on the back via their zero suspension system, but it's running a massive 150 on the front with a Fox 36. That is pretty telling. Now the bike itself is running the latest incarnation of the forward geometry system. Now that is really a line in the sand as far as geometry evolution goes. And I've got to say, it's Mondraker that really pioneered this and really inspired other brands to follow suit. What they essentially did was take the geometry of the time, which was quite short, and they extended it massively. So many trail bikes in that era, around 2013, 2012, you'd be running, say, a 70 millimeter stem. What Mondraker did was reduce the stem back to 10 millimeters, and they took their 60 millimeters and they added it onto the wheelbase of the front center. So you ended up with the cockpit that was the same length as your regular 70 mil stem, but your front wheel was much further out in front of you. And this had two major significant advantages in terms of handling. One of them was when you're going uphill because it put more weight on the front wheel. And the other one, obviously, when you're flying downhill, the confidence of having your front wheel further out in front of you instead of underneath you was just dramatic, really. And I've got to say, you know, we wouldn't be where we are today if they didn't really push this on that much. Now, this bike is the latest version of this, and it's running a 65 and a half degree head angle, 76 and a half degree seat angle on there. I mean, and look at the thing. It's just a gorgeous looking bike. Now, you might also notice this thing sat under here. This is the MIND telemetry system. So you've got a sensor built onto the rocker, you've got another one built onto the fork there, and it's their own in-house suspension telemetry system, and it monitors how fast you're going, it monitors when you're off the ground, it monitors how far you traveled when you're off the ground, and it monitors where your dynamic sag points are. It's an incredible tool for setting up your suspension, and what a brave move, uh, really sort of spending the time and infrastructure into developing this system. And I think this is just a touch on where this is gonna go in the future. It's already an incredibly capable system, and it really does hint at the intention of this bike. For sure, this is a 130 mil travel trail bike, but this isn't for a gentle poodle around the hills. This is the bike they want you to absolutely smash down the hillside. Now, let's find out, shall we? why they wanted to make a bike this aggressive.
Okay, so Louis, do you want to tell me a little bit about just the concept behind this bike? So I'm aware that it's got like a 150 fork, 130 back end. Yeah. Now, is this a bike that's born from the way that you guys ride, or is it born from like like a, a niche in the market, like a hole in the range, maybe? The, uh, yeah. Well, it was a bike that we, it was missing our range before. Uh, we need something in between the F Podium, the XC bike, and the Enduro bike, the Foxy. So yeah, we need for sure the bike that we used to ride here, the concept of the bike we used to ride here. Uh, yeah, this is it. I mean, it's a trial bike, 130, 150, but really capable bike. So with really aggressive geometry, with the setup of the suspension really tuned for, for downhills. And even it's a really light bike, so pedaling is, is really easy. You, when you are downhilling, you will see that it's a really a capable bike and a really proper bike for, for that. It feels like Mondrake has, has had quite a history of having uh, more travel on the front and less on the back. It like, feels like a good balance of the back end that can track the ground, but you have got that bigger brute on the front just to really punch through stuff. Yeah, we think that the bigger fork always gives you a bit more confidence. So you feel like you have a safer front yeah. and you, you tackle more difficult trials and you feel confident. And that inspired you to go to go faster with the with the bike, but without having a, a bike that is too heavy and too lazy on the on the uphill. So trying to get that compromise on on the bike. So now tell me a bit about the visuals on the bike, like just just the yeah. shape of this. I mean, I've always yeah, been a we fan. Wanted, yeah, we want it to be as small as possible. I mean, it's a light bike, but we also wanted to to have a visual of the light bike. Yeah. You know, so we went to the minimum on the on the top tube and also in the down tubes to have this visual and this aggressive uh, um, looking. So even in all the sizes, this is an XL size, yeah. and I think that in the market are few bikes uh, in big uh, size with this kind of looking. I mean, yeah. that's such a beautiful uh, looking even in the in the in the big size. So let's not forget, it was, what, 2013? Yeah. You introduced forward geometry. Now, on this bike, it doesn't look new or out of date, it's just as it should be. But I think the entire bike industry is kind of caught up to where you guys are. Right, right. So let's talk about where we are now in terms of the geometry on here. So what are we running? So this is obviously a size extra large, and it's a trail bike. Yeah, this is a 515 five reach on this on this particular bike, and uh, this is a uh, like the latest evolution on on geometry from our side. Somehow we wanted to get like the pedaling efficiency from a F podium and the suspension capability on a, on a Foxy into one new bike. So it's it's a slack head angle on the front. So it's yeah, it's 65.5 yeah. uh, head angle. It's 76.5 seat tube angle, effective, and uh, it's around 34 centimeters uh, bottom bracket height and uh, 43 and a, and a half uh, chain stay length. And yeah, basically uh, a good overall balanced geometry. And uh, well, for us, it's. It's, uh, the reach is just a tiny bit longer than, than a Foxy Carbon, for instance, but it's not super extreme geometry, but by the numbers we are used to riding. Yeah. So the 120 mil travel trail bikes can feel quite quite firm. Yeah, they yeah. feel very planted. Like I've already noticed, this feels like it's got more travel than it has. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point because the kinematic approach on this model, it's very similar than the Foxy Carbon. So basically what we wanted to get is a great absorption of the rear suspension. And even though it has less travel than the Foxy, which is 150, it, it feels like it is slightly longer travel, but it in reality is 130. So uh, the reality is that it's very close on kinematics uh, to the Foxy Carbon rather than the F-Podium. So I, I also noticed as well, I've been playing with the climb switch and I've got to say it didn't make too much difference between open and mid. We've been testing uh, shocks and suspension with uh, manufacturers, for instance, with, with say Fox and Rock Shocks uh, for so long, testing uh, the uh, different tunes to get the best of our zero suspension design. And they always say that our suspension uh, design 
is very efficient. So what, they, do, what do they mean by that? Yeah, basically we don't really need any kind of help from, from more damping that maybe other suspension designs need yeah. to get the best, of, the best end result of this bike. When you're designing any bike, you're gonna to need to ride working prototypes. Now, the first stage of that is by having an aluminium prototype. Mondraker will have two or three very slightly different iterations, perhaps slightly different kinematics available to test the suspension on there or slightly different geometry refinements there. Now, the aim is to make sure that the bike fills the design brief to make sure it rides exactly as they intended. Now this particular bike has got a prototype shock on there so they will have also been testing different shock tunes to make sure it matches up to how the back end feels. Now once they've actually mastered the feeling of the bike in aluminium then they will move on to carbon. Now the thing with carbon design it's not just a case of making a, like a clone of the aluminium frame just sending it to the factory and getting them to reproduce it because there's so much more to take into account. Now the layup of carbon is everything in the way that carbon bikes ride. The way they lay the carbon up and the amount of layers of that carbon they have can dramatically change the way a frame feels. Now for example, if you just picked high modulus carbon and made a clone copy of this frame, it could end up being almost unrideable because it could be just too stiff everywhere. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna transmit shock to you. So they need to refine the process of how they lay up the carbon, how thin the carbon is in certain areas, and the way that the carbon crosses over with the weave. It all ends up to basically offering you what you need. Frame has to have compliance, otherwise it won't be rideable. Now over the years, Mondraker has managed to refine this process. Now perhaps it might have taken seven or eight different frame layups, front and rear, to get the optimum in the past with bikes like the Dune but for the Rays, it only took three configurations. Now that really is progression within the company. So one final question I, I've got to ask, yeah. right? There's, there's a lot of beautiful bikes out there, but this like blade of a top tube is like, that's like the Mondraker look. How, like that looks impossible to manufacture to me. Yeah, the thing is that that was probably the hardest area from the whole frame uh, to make it happen to manufacture. At first sight, when when the when they saw all the sketches and uh, the, the, the the shapes we wanted to to achieve, they said that they they probably wouldn't be able to make it happen. But finally, they got it, and yeah, that's one of the the key areas of the bike. So, so would you say that working with the manufacturers in the way that Mondraker does it? You know, they've, they've helped you make your product better, but you might have arguably helped them manufacture things better as well? Yeah, we're always pushing the boundaries, maybe also on, on frame design, and somehow, probably, yeah, that also is a, is a key thing also for them and uh, pushes them to, to make things better. And uh, I think both, both parties uh, win. Okay, Salva, so what we have here is a 130mm aggressive trail bike. Now, I think I really understand this bike. It's the sort of style bike that I love to ride. But this must have logistically been quite difficult to spec out because you could go too small in terms of the capabilities of the components or you could go the flip side and go too big. Yeah, so how, how do you get to, uh, to choose this sort yeah, of spec? It's, it's difficult to get the right balance yeah. because we were looking at a bike in between a DC bike and a proper enduro bike yeah. because we, are, we already have bike for this use. I mean, the tires are balanced tires for um, all, all kinds of users, not just the enduro racer or the cross country. The rest of the spec, the brakes and the suspension is at the same time uh, trying to get this balance of the bike. So a good suspension, but not too free, not too, not too soft, 
uh, a bit more travel on the front to get people more confidence. Yeah, sure. It's a bike that for sure, uh, almost every every owner we change something because if we use like more of the enduro, more of the cross country side, but the bike is very capable to, to change small things to adapt to the right use for you. But we think that as it is, is a, a good balance for a, for average rider, for almost every ride. Um, and tell me a little bit about the mind system as well. And like, who is it for and how is it going to be beneficial? Yeah, so uh, yeah, mine, mine is a great tool uh, um, for, for anybody. So if you don't really know how to set up your bike, just following a very easy steps, you can really set up your bike for your riding style. It's a great tool to, to know what's going on with your bike, with your suspension when riding. So it records what the suspension are doing when riding. And it is constantly measuring uh, how much suspension suspension travel you are using, jumps, air time, and if you had any bottom out during the ride. So it's really a very nice tool. What can you say? This is the warehouse where the SRAM, the Rock Sharks, the Fox, the Shimano, all the stuff comes in here to build up all of the bikes. And now what's going on behind me and in front of me here is pre-production. You'll have things like the hoses put into the frames, cups put into the frame sets. And as you can see behind me, a number of other preparation things going on. So it takes about seven people to put together a single frame, but most of that is in pre-production. The last stages, which happen upstairs, which we're gonna to go to in a minute, all happens by a single person. Now it takes between, I think it's between eight and 12 bikes a day that they're gonna be putting out. It's about 200 bikes in total, and the time does vary depending on the style of bike. Like a kid's bike with less components is gonna take less time, so you're gonna make more of those. Whereas e-bikes, obviously there's a lot more going on with a motor and all the wiring loom and stuff in there, so that's gonna take a lot longer. Uh, but yeah, like I said, about 200 bikes a day they're putting out here, and each one is done by hand. So after pre-production, all of the frames come down here, so they've obviously got their hoses in place ready to be assembled. You've got all the forks and all the other components here. Uh, each of these will be assembled by one staff member on one of each of the eight rows here. Now each of these eight rows features a park tool electric work stand. These are double-sided remember so that's 80 of these currently. Uh, that will be getting up to 100 in this one room which is just crazy. Now on each one of these work stands you can see a little display and the display has a step-by-step -step instruction including torque settings and all the vital stats that each one of these staff members need. So they're responsible for building one bike per person thanks to the pre-assembly system. It's, it's incredible to see. Uh, each one of these people is absolute expert in what they do. Okay, so after the hive of activity we've just been seeing in a production facility, you end up with a completely finished bike. So this is a brand new raise ready to go in the packaging. Now here is one more cool thing about this company. The packaging behind me, as you can see, is 100% recyclable. So they've redesigned all of their packaging in order to make it just better for everyone. And something that's especially cool about it is it's an open source model. So other manufacturers can also choose to follow this. Remember, it's just cardboard boxes. They have all of the templates on their website so other brands can also use this. The only thing that's in the box that is not recyclable is a Velcro strap, which can obviously be reused. If you're hanging your bike up or traveling your bike, it's a useful thing to have. You've got to admire that. The market now, like all bikes are really capable. Even like the F-Podium, the cross-country yeah. bike, you can ride so much on it. Mm -hmm. So tell us a bit about the sort of rider that you're aiming this bike at. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know now there is, uh, with the boom of the e-bikes, there are certain riders that they are looking for a really the feeling of the terrain, the feeling of the 
of suffering. Yeah. And, 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 and it's true that the first riders jumping into the e-bikes, we feel that are the enduro riders. So um, for this kind of riders, this kind of bikes, it makes a lot of sense uh, because they can combine the e-bike rides with a really aggressive riding, but also feeling the terrain and feeling the pedal inefficiency. I was just saying a minute ago to Louis that I think that a bike with this sort of intention could be misunderstood by people that typically ride bigger travel bikes because they're like, oh, it climbs so well, I ride a 160 uh, bike, but this is probably a better style bike. Doing bikes for so many years, you know that you are never going to please everybody. Yeah. And it's impossible. And so we have the very determined uh, rider we have, or the, the, the riders that like our brand. And they like the brand because we make different things. We have our own style. Um, you all have already seen the, the places we ride. So at the end, the bikes have the, the DNA from the brand, for the trails where, where we ride, for the way we ride bikes. Ah. Well, that has been a great couple of days hanging out with Amandre Cacri here near Alicante in Spain. I'll tell you what, there's a lot more that goes into designing bikes like this and MCI, especially with features like that blade of the top tube. Now, I'm sure you're going to have some questions based on Mondraker uh, and the stuff we'll be talking about in this video, so please do get involved in the comments underneath. If there's enough great questions about the brand, uh, we'll put together an Ask Special on them. Uh, don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you like the video, and we'll see you in another one soon. Take care.